first of all, I would like to thank to the organizing for inviting me in this very nice place. And I'm sure extending this very nice lunch that the dinner will be even better. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, I had bad experience with the stairs. Hopefully, there will be no stairs. <laughs> uh, and I will present a, a talk which is based on a common work with uh, Juan Enrique Martinez Legas. He appears here everywhere, <laughs> but just disappeared. <laughs> uh, myself and a student uh, who's He's from Belize, but he studied in Mexico and spent uh, some time in, in, in Barcelona with Juan Enrique. He, he was a good student, but he left us at the end. And uh, we will speak about the usual uh, convex op semi-infinite optimization problems, where we have to minimize uh, convex function over possibly infinitely many convex constraints. And uh, T has no topological structure, possibly infinite set, and this function H and FT, they are uh, finite valued convex function defined on finite dimensional space Rn. Uh, as usual, we will denote by F the feasible set, the set of all x which uh, fulfill these uh, conditions, and uh, <coughs> we will make use of uh, the use for the very well-known Slater condition. It's the Slater condition is fulfilled if there is a point which fulfills these inequalities, strict inequalities for every t from the index set. One of the interesting characteristics of the semi-infinite programming is that uh, at the point x uh, on the boundary of the feasible set, even in the linear semi-infinite case, uh, may not have any active constraint, which means that this supremum is zero, but uh, f of x bar is strictly less than for every t. And it could appear in linear semi-infinite optimization, so on the whole boundary example, that on the whole boundary there is no active constraints. And uh, for, for to use Karush Kontakia approach, etc., uh, it's uh, very bad news. And because of this, we need uh, we need to invent some something which is similar to uh, active constraints. Uh, and uh, here there are some notations, and uh, uh, this will represent the convex cone generated by the set S, K plus and K minus, you know, the positive and negative polar cones of the cone K. And we will make use of the following definition. This is the well-known definition of the cone of feasible directions, and this is the set of active indices, both of them, they are local definition given in the point x bar. Uh, we will use two approaches uh, to define gamma active constraints. Uh, the first one is we will define gamma active constraints using subdifferentials. Uh, and as usual, we will denote the subdifferential of, of, of the convex function by means of uh, this symbol, which is written here. And we will present our definition of gamma active constraints, which is a generalization of active constraints at a given point. And uh, always we will speak about uh, this kind of uh, active gamma active constraints for the points which belong to the boundary of the set. And let us have one point x bar on the boundary and a fixed uh, positive number. First, we will define 
gamma active indices. This is the set of t such that f of t of is zero, but not only not on the point x bar, but on the point y, which belongs to the gamma ball around x bar. And uh, we will present the corresponding set of gamma indexes constraints. These are these sub uh, these sub uh, vectors from the sub differentials, but not in x bar, but in the point y, which belongs to the gamma ball, and such that f of t in the point y is zero. And um, uh, this is the definition of the gamma active constraints at a certain point, but with these gamma index, gamma uh, constraints depend on a parameter gamma which is strictly greater than zero. I will present some properties of these uh, gamma active uh, indices. First, if zero n belongs to the set of uh, gamma active constraints for some point x bar and gamma st strictly greater than zero, then if there exists an uh, index which belongs to the tx for all x from f. This means that the Slater condition, for instance, is not fulfilled. And uh, corollary from this proposition that if psi sigma satisfies the Slater condition, then zero n does not belong to the set of gamma active constraints for all x from Rn and gamma strictly greater than zero. Unfortunately, we cannot make the reverse implication. So if I have this, which is written here, I cannot say that the Slater condition is satisfied. And uh, some other things. Uh, I will present you a lemma. If we are on the boundary of the set, then this set of gamma active indices is non-empty for any gamma which is greater than zero. If you use the usual active indices, this set could be empty. And with this, with this new definition, we guarantee that this set of gamma active indices is always non-empty. So we could represent, for instance, I have indices like this. I have no, I have no active constraints, but this which is close to here, I will have it in gamma active indices. Okay, and if the set of active constraints, uh, the, the the set of active indices is empty, then this set, the gamma active indices is infinite for any gamma which is greater than zero. So it's uh, supposed that probably we will need some procedure of uh, taking gamma smaller and smaller in, in order to get something which is similar to active indices. And if t is finite, then this which is written here, gamma active indices and uh, usual active indices, this, uh, there, uh, there will be equality for sufficiently small gamma. But in fact, this not, does not make sense to consider gamma active indices, gamma active constraints, when T is a finite set. Uh, the set of gamma active indices brings a very useful information for the feasibility. So, if I have a point and I have another point which belongs to the gamma ball, I could check if this is a feasible point, checking if the inequalities are fulfilled not for every t from t, but only from this t which belongs to the gamma active indices. So this gamma active indices and gamma active constraints bring, bring you a lot of local information for the feasibility. And here there are two lemacy propositions which are well known. If I have a convex function, and this is a feasible set with just one function, uh, and I have a direction such that this uh, directional derivative is strictly less than zero, then this d belongs to the cone of feasible direction. And 
another similar condition, then if x bar is not a global minimum, all this directional derivative is less or equal to zero, then d belongs to the closure of the cone of feasible direction. Now I go back to my, my semi-infinite settings and I have a point from the feasible set and the direction in a strictly positive parameter gamma. If uh, the directional uh, derivative is less than zero for all t from the set of gamma active indices, then d belongs to the cone of feasible direction. Also, we will we see that uh, we can we can check even a feasible even even a, a a direction is a feasible direction just checking for not for the whole t but just for the this t which belongs to the set of gamma uh, gamma active indices and here there is a theorem which says that if we are if we have a point from the feasible set in the direction for a certain gamma strictly than, greater than zero and we assume that the Slater condition is fulfilled then if the directional derivative <coughs> at y is strictly less than zero for all y uh, which belongs to the gamma ball of x bar and t which belongs to the ty then d is a feasible direction of, uh, at, uh, at the point x bar also, it, here we, there, there appeared not all t, just around, which appears in the gamma active indices around, around, around the point. And another corollary, if we have a point from the boundary, and we have u, this color product, less or equal to zero, for every u from the set of gamma active indices and assume that the Slater condition is fulfilled then we, we can conclude that this direction d belongs to the cone of feasible direction so we check here not with the directional derivative but just with the set of gamma active constraints and uh, we see here very useful corollary that if x bar belongs to the boundary of the set f and gamma is the positive and assume that the Slater condition is fulfilled that this inclusion is inside the closure of the cone of the cone of feasible direction our goal is to make this cone smaller smaller and smaller in order to be closer to this set which gives you a lot of information about the feasibility and etc and another color we have uh, uh, a point from the boundary of the feasible set x bar again with the Slater condition then if the feasible set is just one point then this set which appears here and here is just the cone of the gamma active constraints and this is equal to Rn and if x bar is an optimal solution of our optimization pro convex semi-infinite optimization problems then we have here the intersection of the subdifferential minus subdifferential of the objective function with these things which is should be non-empty and this is important condition and because of this I'm trying to make this smaller smaller and smaller in order to have a representation of this then I will apply it here etc and uh, no, that is just uh, these things another approach uh, to construct gamma active constraints in semi convex semi infinite uh, this is an uh, approach via linearization um, and here I will use the usual conjugate of a function given by this expression which is written here everybody everybody knows this uh, 
And using this concept, I will present the uh, using this concept, I will present the other manner, the set of gamma active indices and the set of gamma active constraints via linearization. This letter L here means linearizations, and this means that the gamma active indices are this t at a given point x bar and gamma strictly greater than zero. Once again, if there is a point from the gamma ball around x bar and q from rn such that this is which is written here is fulfilled. And of course the gamma indices active uh, the gamma active constraints these are these u from rn such this which is written here is fulfilled for some t and for some point which is from the gamma ball round x bar. And here there are all these propositions which have been written before, uh, we can use here, we can use this local information uh, to speak about feasibility, uh, etc. Here there are uh, two very well-known condition. And these two propositions uh, give us very important information which, uh, which uh, show these propositions show that uh, the better thing is to use subdifferential in order to construct gamma active constraints. Why? This, which is written here, shows that the set of gamma active uh, indices uh, using uh, subdifferential is less than this one using linearization. And there are examples which show that this is strict. So the same for the set of gamma active uh, constraints. So this means that this set of gamma active constraints using subdifferential is better. In which sense is better? Because uh, this is smaller. This is smaller. If I put instead of gamma active constraint all the whole all the space Rn, it does not help. So I need something smaller, smaller and smaller. And, the, and this will be much more useful for the local information, checking something like feasibility, optimality, etc. And uh, because here there are examples showing that this uh, inclusion is strict, this means that this kind of gamma active indices is better. Uh, Again, we have the same using uh, linearization instead of uh, sub. Uh, uh, we have if this zero n belongs to the set of uh, gamma active constraints using linearization, this Slater condition is not fulfilled. And again, these three things: if this is unbounded, uh, the, the, this uh, very important thing that the set of gamma active indices is non-empty on the whole boundary. This, uh, uh, and if this is empty, the set of active indices, this, this set of gamma active indices is non-empty. And if this is finite, these two uh, notion of uh, gamma active uh, indices and active indices, they coincide for a sufficiently small gamma greater than zero. Once again, we can use this for checking feasibility only with the local information not with the whole T. Uh, we can check using the gamma active constraints if a certain direction belongs to the set, belongs to the cone of feasible direction. Again, we see that this cone the, is inside of this of closure, this cone, and uh, as I told you, if this cone is smaller, it is better. But uh, we know that it's smaller when instead of L we have subdifferentials. And here there is another proposition which is uh, more or less the same like uh, the pr proposition using subdifferential with this difference which is written here. Where if uh, X is an extreme point of the feasible set, the dimension of this cone which is written here is N. Because the cone because this set using subdifferential is smaller, we cannot claim this. 
with a bigger cone, we can claim that the dimension is n, but with a smaller cone, we cannot claim it. Uh, at the end, I will show you some, some, these three papers, they are, they are devoted to some kind of questions, but in linear semi infinite optimization, this is a small a book, and uh, the things which are devoted to the convex case, they are presented in a paper, Gamma Active Constraints, which will appear in numerical function analysis and optimization. And uh, with this, thank you very much for your attention.